Yeah. <laughs> you the, get the fuck out of here. The one time I can remember actually being okay with a stranger talking in a movie theater was when I was watching Thor 1. And there were like four girls in the row directly behind me. And when, uh, when they smack into Thor it, with their jeep in the middle of the desert. Yeah. And she asked, but where did he come from? One of the girls behind me said, where did he go? Where did he come from, Cotton Eye Joe? And I'm just sitting there going, all right, all right. That was pretty good. <laughs> it's like, I'm fine with this. I'm, I was fine with that. By the way, they were cracking jokes oh, for the geez. first half of the movie. And then Chris Hemsworth took off his shirt. And they were completely silent for the rest of the film. <laughs> Looks like Shadow picked a sensitive spot. It's I think just having he shirtless Hemsworth and then flannel, cl flannel clad Hemsworth was enough to get them to actually pay respect to the movie. It's funny. Did I uh, tell you about my Hunger Games experience with Scott? I don't think so. We went to watch the Hunger Games, uh, Mockingjay, or not Mockingjay, sorry, Catching Fire, and um, there was a chick that was in the row behind us that would not shut up the entire movie. We just kept talking about just random shit. And I was just like, can you please be quiet? Thank you. Like, sometime during the movie. And uh -huh. I turned back around, and then she went... She started you... complaining about no, you, No, no, no. She said, can you please get a haircut? Thank you. And I, like, went... I turned around and just went, fuck off. Like semi-loudly uh -huh. and she instantly shut up and I didn't hear anything out of them for the rest of the movie. Well, actually, I heard little whispers and just nee, 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 past that. If you what want to get on my... girl doing telling you to get a haircut? Like, for crying out loud, how would because she feel Because only girls are allowed to have... Only girls are allowed to have long hair. Guys aren't allowed to have long hair. That just makes them gross and ooh. Guys are supposed to wear tuxedos and have big, fat horse dicks. That's what guys do. Dude, I have met so many chicks that actually are like that, and it that grosses me out some nasty holes in the Norman. I don't like it. It might be a Tennessee thing, I don't know, but there's a lot of... I don't think it's just a Tennessee thing. I didn't really get to know a lot of girls until I was in, like, my second to last year in high school, so yeah. um, they probably did. Long, a lot long, of girls in my estate probably were like that, too. Yeah, long story short, it goes both ways. Like, yeah. I know I know. there's a recent thing with feminism um, and how like, girls getting shoehorn shoehorned away from um, masculine roles because they were perceived as weak or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Um... And I'm glad that there's a huge movement for that. I'm hoping immediately afterwards we can get something similar for guys that are really sensitive and, like... Make it okay for guys to appear feminine? Yeah! Yeah. Like, holy shit, that would be amazing. Because, <laughs> I'm, I know we're both totally like that. Hold on, hang on. Gene Roddenberry actually had an idea for that in uh, Star Trek. Oh, did he? Um... In the <laughs> Did you see that shit? Oh my god. Sorry. Oh, when they were filming the pilot episode of The Next Generation, uh, he had his co uh, wardrobe team design a unisex variant of the costume. You know, in the original series, the women wore these, like, miniskirt things. Yeah. They weren't uniforms. They, weren't, they didn't wear pants. So, they designed... A male version of the uniform and a female version of the uniform. In the pilot episode, Yar and Troy wear a skirt version of the regular uniform. Uh, they switched uh, they switched Yar over to a standard uniform pretty quickly. I think she only wears the skirt in one scene, but Troy wears the skirt for the whole episode. Roddenberry wanted. Roddenberry didn't uh, just want to see women in skirts, though, like he saw in the original series. He was like, okay, you know what? We, the the Federation, human, human society in the 24th century should be beyond gender stereotypes for clothing. Hi, buddy. So why not, why not um, have it like this? The Federation developed, Starfleet developed two different uniforms. A masculine version, full, full body jumpsuit, and a female version, a skirt style jumpsuit. But they weren't necessarily male and female. Anyone could wear either one whenever they wanted. So... 
they showed a couple of men in the pilot episode wearing the skirt versions of the suits. Commander, I'm bringing us in. I'll get as close to the site as I can. The suits were called scants, a, a combination of skirt and pant. And the men looked freaking ridiculous wearing them. They should, if they've got masculine body types. I mean... Yeah, one did. One was just a straight-up normal guy with thick legs and... And, uh, it looked really weird. <laughs> you know, I've thought about... But it was progressive. Yeah. It's like, you can't fault him for the, having the idea, but it just didn't look very good. Yeah. And that's half... That, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. As much as I would love to try out how skirts would look, I know I wouldn't look good in them, so I'm never going to bother doing that. If I could rock it, I'd rock it. Otherwise, no. <laughs> I think I am just Bomb too tall position. to wear We're dresses. Commander, can you read me? I think dresses are like sort of like a cute thing, and I I don't think you can be cute and tall at the same time. I mean that's my personal preference. I'm sure that a lot of people are going to disagree with me on that. Yeah, straight up. Get your ass over here. The nuke is almost ready. Get to the rendezvous point, Williams. Negative. Move your ass, Liz. Have us pinned down on the AA tower. We've taken heavy casualties. Oh jeez. We'll never make the rendezvous point in time. Oh, that's too bad, Ash. Uh, wow. Oh, goodbye, Normandy then. needs to pick them up. Get them out of there, Joker, now! <laughs> Negative! It's too hot! Can't risk it! We'll hold them off as long as we can- It's okay, Commander. I need a couple of minutes to finish arming the bomb. Go get them and meet me back here. Guard the bomb. You keep that nuke safe. You're the bomb, Caden. One of my sixth grade teachers once asked us, "So what's what's the the slang the bomb? What what's what's that slang?" And we're like, "Well, if you're the bomb, then you're cool or you're awesome or something like that." And he's like, "Well, my wife didn't like it. I went home and I told my wife, she I I got home after school and she'd already prepared dinner and had it on the table and I said, "Honey, you're a bomb," and she said to me, "Well, then you could just fix your own dinner tomorrow night," and then. My class was just like, no, it's the bomb. And you're like 50, so you shouldn't use it. <laughs> Where the hell am I going? I think you were going back the way you came, right? Yeah, back to the AA tower. Okay. Is this the door? No, it's not the door. Sorry, this it's supposed to be a time that I'm supposed to be like... No, it's behind you. It's back there. Oh. I think. No, no, no. It's behind you. It's back there. I think you were right next to this waterfall thing when you came out. Uh, no? What the hell? Am I losing it? Oh. Oh. What? It's down there. The fuck? <laughs> okay. Caden, you want to get on that bomb, please? No, there's a guy there. Oh, that's not Caden. Okay. What the oh, oh, okay. Geez. Wow. I feel less bad now. I okay, that wasn't super obvious. I can't wait to go back to game number two, where the door controls are in the middle of the actual door. Oh, they are, aren't they? I'm so glad they made that change. Yeah. Hi. Whoa. Whoa. I <laughs> capped him in the knees. In the knees. Yes, I destroyed another hacked geth. I know, I keep doing it. <laughs> oh my god. He's running. Why does it say repairing? It used to say fatigued. Um, On your stamina meter down there. It's probably a bug because that's... You know, what the... What the fuck? What the fucking shit? Yeah, I'm. Uh, no, nope, nope, walk away to your right. Okay. Left. Okay. Thank you. I was. I was about to have. A Hang on. Wait. No. No. <laughs> it appears the Geth have sent reinforcements. Heads up, LT. We just spotted a troop ship. <laughs> oh it's my god. Hidden. There's Geth pouring out all over the bomb site. How bad is it? Can you hold them off? There's too many. I don't think we can survive until you get here. I'm activating the bomb. Damn it. What the hell are you doing, Elenko? 
I'm just making sure this bomb goes off, no matter what. It's done, Commander. Go get Williams and get the hell out of here. Screw that. We can handle ourselves. Go back and get Alenko. Fuck. Okay, going after Caden. Alenko, radio Joker and tell him to meet us at the bomb site. Yes, Commander. I. I... You know it's the right choice, LT. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ash. I had to make a choice. I understand, Commander. I don't regret a thing. <laughs> you made that decision. Don't want to close long time ago. my eyes. Go, turn around, turn around, turn around. Go get that thing. Don't want to fall don't, don't asleep. Don't go there yet. Get but that. I miss you, baby. And I don't want to miss a thing. Oh, is it gone now? Oh, it's not. Okay. Because I definitely want to check this crate. And take time out of the precious moments I have to save Ashley or Caden to make sure I get all the loot because I'm an asshole. Apparently. How how long ago did you decide you were gonna save Caden? What do you mean? You made the choice very quickly on that selection. So I have a feeling that you already knew a lot like coming into this that you knew. When exactly I what decided you I wanted his dick inside me. And when was that? <laughs> when we had that conversation with Liara and Caden. <laughs> okay. Oh god, wow, he, he flatlined. Um, also, it makes more sense for um, for uh, Shepard to rescue Caden at this point, because it's still possible that they could disarm the bomb. So being close proximity to the bomb is preferable. Yeah, because the bomb is more important than the AA power. Uh-huh. Like, it is the target of opportunity, basically. And it really sucks for Ashley, but the AA tower is not as important as the bomb going off. So, mm -hmm. um, it, it doesn't come down to so much the people in some cases, or it, it more comes down to what's more important. I out. getcha. We can't hold them! Damn it! Suppressing fire! Cover your flank! Cover your. This isn't a pool. It's an operating table. Also, you feel justified seeing Saren here, and you realize Saren would be right on top of the bomb. And then you'd be like, oh, I okay. You, and I'm and the Saren. I'm totally convinced the Salarians were the real threat. An impressive diversion. Of course, it was all for nothing. I can't let you disrupt what I've accomplished here. You can't possibly understand what's really at stake. Mm. You work for a reaper! Sovereign and its kind destroyed the Protheans. What else is there to understand? You've seen the vision from the beacons, Shepard. You of all people should understand what the Reapers are capable of. They cannot be stopped. Do not mire yourself in pointless revolt. Do not sacrifice everything for the sake of petty freedoms. The Protheans tried to fight, and they were utterly destroyed. Trillions dead. But what if they had bowed before the invaders? Would the Protheans still exist? Is submission not preferable to extinction? You're fooling yourself, buddy. Do you really believe the Reapers will let us live? Now you see why I never came forward with this to the Council. We organics are driven by emotion instead of logic. We will fight even when we know we cannot win. Mm, no. But if we work with the Reapers, if we make ourselves useful, Think how many lives could be spared. You didn't answer Once my question. I this, I you just dodged my question. Though I was aware of the dangers. I had hoped this facility could protect me. You're just a puppet, buddy. You're like every other poor bastard in this place. A tool Sovereign can use, then cast aside. I've studied the effects of indoctrination. The more control Sovereign exerts, the less capable the subject becomes. That is my saving grace. The Sovereign needs me to find the conduit. My mind is still my own. For now. But the transformation from ally to servant can be subtle. I will not let it happen to me. It's already, it's already happened. happened. Sovereign's manipulating you and you don't even know it. You're already under its power. No, Sovereign needs me. If I find the conduit, I've been promised a reprieve from the inevitable. 
This is my only hope. All right. Sovereign's going to betray you. Don't you see? You are just a tool. Sovereign is using you. In the end, you'll be tossed aside with all the rest. Do you think you can sway me, Shepard? Do you think I haven't already thought of this? Sovereign is a machine. It thinks like a machine. If I can prove my value, I become a resource worth maintaining. There is no other logical conclusion. Why are the Geth following Sovereign? They believe Sovereign to be some kind of god, the pinnacle of their own evolution. But the reaction of their deity is most telling. It is insulted. Sovereign does not desire the pitiful devotions the Geth hurl at it. They are just tools, and no amount of belief on their part will change that. But as tools, they are useful. They will survive the coming invasion. If organic life is to survive, we must also prove we are useful. We must work with the Reapers. Tell me why Sovereign needs the Conduit. Tell me what it is. Maybe we can find a way to stop them. The conduit is the Just key tell to your me what it is. My salvation. <laughs> Things will never be the same. I help to find it. That is the only reason I have not been indoctrinated. You are a coward. You betrayed the law. Thank you. I'd rather die fighting than live as a slave. I'm not doing this for myself. Don't you see? Sovereign will succeed. It is inevitable. My way is the only way any of us will survive. I'm forging an alliance between us and the Reapers, between organics and machines. Dogs and, and cats doing living so, together. I will save more lives than have ever existed. But you would undo my work. You would doom our entire civilization to complete annihilation. And for that, you must die. All right. Boss fight time. Whoop, 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 whoop. Come here, bitch, on your stupid-ass floating platform of death and damnation. So, the bomb is still going off, right? Because we just had, like, a five-minute conversation with him. Yup. That was a fun conversation, though. Look at him on his crazy floaty platform. Oh, ain't he cute? Ain't he a cutie patootie? You're a cutie patootie. Where does he think he is, the Green Goblin? Avenge me! Ah. What did he look at? What distracted him? The uh, alarm going off. Oh. Right. Where the bomb? Probably the bomb. Alarm going off. Everybody, hang on! Whoa! Was a nuke. It just looked like the Normandy exploded because of the way it was positioned in the frame. Yeah. <laughs> 